morning. Welcome to the Curate's House for Sunday Worship. It's really good to join with you this morning. Um, no matter where we are um, scattered in different places, this morning we're taking some time to come together, uh, to come to God in worship, in prayer and in thought. We start with uh, those wonderful Easter words. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Jesus said, I am the way, so come. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth, so come and receive. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. So come, receive, and respond. Loving God, as we come in your name this morning, listen to us and bring us peace. Be our rock and our refuge, that we may be made strong. Let your face shine upon us, that we may show your love. Amen. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. So 
come to our time of confession now. The time where we come to God and ask God's forgiveness for the ways and the things that we have thought and done uh, that have not been following Jesus. So let us pray. Forgive us, loving Lord, that we have strayed from your way, that we sometimes do not follow you. Forgive us and help us. Forgive us for the times when our lives have not been shaped by your truth. When we believe lies and choose to live by them. Forgive us and help us. Forgive us for when we have denied your life in us and in others. Choosing to push you away and turn to other things for life. Forgive us and help us. Lord Jesus, free us to follow you as the way, the truth and the life. Open our eyes to see the truth of who you are and give us the courage to follow you. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. We listen now as we remember that we are part of a worldwide church.
خصمك في قلوب شاكرة srcem svi Aleluja Budi slavljeno Bože naš Osana i nesesi Our Bible reading is being read for us by Margaret Elam. Thank you, Margaret. And then Gary is going to reflect on that passage for us. Do not be worried and upset, Jesus told them. Believe in God and believe also in me. There are many rooms in my father's house and I'm going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself, so that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way to get there? Jesus answered him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. Now that you have known me, he said to them, you will know my father also. And from now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father. That is all we need. Jesus answered, for a long time, I have been with you all. Yet you do not know me, Philip. Whoever has seen me has seen the father. Why then do you say, show us the father? Do you not believe, Philip, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I have spoken to you, Jesus said to his disciples, do not come from me. The Father who remains in me does his own work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. If not, believe because of the things I do. I am telling you the truth. Whoever believes in me will do what I do. Yes, he will do even greater things because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask for in my name so that the Father's glory will be shown through the Son. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. Oh, hello. You found me. You've caught me sneaking away for a cup of coffee and, uh, and a biscuit as I spend some time looking at our gospel reading today and thinking and reflecting about it in the context of the current lockdown. Later today, we're going to hear from the Prime Minister as he sets out the government's plans for the next stage following on from the lockdown, perhaps beginning to relax some of the measures in the hope to reawaken the economy, but trying to keep the spread of the infections as low as possible. How do you feel about that? Are you bursting with energy and can't wait to get outside? Or does the thought fill you with anxiety about the risk to exposure to the virus? Or are you one of those who knows that whatever's said isn't going to make any difference to you because you still have to stay at home for many more weeks. Perhaps it's because of all of this that Jesus' opening words in our Gospel reading really grabbed me today. Do not be worried or upset. 
These comforting words from Jesus are one of the reasons why this pas passage is so often read at funerals. That and the idea that Jesus has prepared a place for us to join him once our lives have ended here. But I think they speak to us differently today. In the middle of a pandemic, which really will only begin to come under control once a vaccine has been developed and proven to be effective and a significant number of us have been inoculated and that's not going to be done by Monday. We are worried and upset. The whole world is. Our fragility has been exposed and we're vulnerable to either catch the virus or pass it on to others which could have devastating effects. Enormous change has taken place very quickly. And many things that just a few months ago we took for granted have altered and remain so for some considerable time. So what does Jesus mean today when he says, do not be worried or upset? I'm very conscious at this time that Helen and I live in this house with lots of rooms. Whilst there are so many people on this estate where their homes are full to bursting. But there are a few times each year when these rooms are full. If we can coordinate everyone's diaries around Christmas or around birthday celebrations, every room is full and there's such a buzz. Matt's playing with his son, Jimmy. The girls are at this mirror, swapping ideas as they do their hair and makeup. And, and Johnny, well, Johnny's normally standing here with his my guitar, uh, singing to everyone, whether they like it or not. And someone is downstairs in the kitchen, cooking something which smells delicious. Our children all have their own homes and their own families, but this is also their home. This too is where they belong, and they are always welcome. Jesus' words of comfort are, I think, reminding us of the family that we now belong to, adopted into, not because we're popular or clever or important, but because we're loved. Our reading from Ephesians during morning prayers this week have been reminding us of this. Jesus rescues us through his death on the cross and his resurrection to new life, dealing with all of the stuff that gets in the way and spoils our relationship with God and with each other. Here are just a few of the verses. Because of his love, God had already decided that through Jesus Christ, he would make us his children. This was his pleasure and his purpose. Let us praise God for his glorious grace, for the free gift he gave us in his dear son. For the, by the blood of Christ we are set free. That is, our sins have been forgiven. How great is the grace of God, which he gave to us in such large measure. Jesus summed it up beautifully in our reading when he simply said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. We don't know the next time when these rooms will be filled with our family. But we speak or text or WhatsApp them whenever we can, most days. 
and when we're allowed, we'll go and visit them where they are. However uncertain or scary the future is, we don't need to be worried or upset because we are members of God's family. We belong and we always will belong. Wherever we are now, we will always have a home. And long before the idea of smartphones, God created the best and original instant messaging. We call it prayer. So we can always be connected. And as we shall see next week, Jesus comes and actually dwells within us. So actually, we're never alone. So even in the midst of such up upheaval and uncertainty, may you know the peace that Jesus gives as you recall and remember how loved you are as a child of God who is never alone and always welcome.
So let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer, I thought today we would pray uh, using the fingers and thumb on our hands uh, to help us think about the different things that we would pray for. Uh, so as we do this, perhaps you'd like to hold your hand up and we're going to start uh, with our thumb. The thumb is closest to us, uh, so we're going to pray for our family and friends. Lord Jesus, we pray for our family and friends, near and far, asking for God's protection at this time. We long for this day to be filled with moments of joy and hope. And in the isolation that they would know, they are loved. Lord of love, Bring them abundant life. Our second finger is our index finger. This is our pointing finger. Um, so we're going to use this to pray uh, for people who teach us, who advise us or help us, because they need wisdom and support to do this. So Lord Jesus, we pray for all teachers, all medical staff, journalists, scientists, all people who offer advice. Please give them the wisdom to know what is right. Courage to act wisely and support as they need it. Lord of love, bring them abundant life. Our middle finger is our tallest finger and so we're going to use it to pray uh, for our leaders, for our government, um, for people in positions of authority because they need guidance. So Lord Jesus we pray for all people in leadership. For the leaders of the companies we work for or the places where we volunteer. For our government, and governments all around the world. For the leaders of our faith communities. Please give them guidance. Would their decisions be guided by seeking the good of the people they serve? Lord of love, bring them abundant life. Our ring finger, it's actually quite difficult to hold this one up on its own, <laughs> but our ring finger is actually the weakest of all your fingers, so uh, we're going to pray here for people who are, are unwell, who are struggling, who are disadvantaged, because uh, they need help. So Lord Jesus, uh, we pray for the many people who are not well, who are struggling, uh, who are disadvantaged at the moment. We pray for your healing for them, your comfort to be with them, and your light to shine in the darkness. Lord of love, bring them abundant life. And with our little finger, the last one, uh, we're going to pray for ourselves. Lord Jesus, we bring our own needs before you today. How we feel, what we are thinking, the situation we are in, we lift to you and trust that you are walking this journey with us. 
Lord of love, bring us abundant life. We make all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we come to the peace. And as we come, we remember that we are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. And I hear you say back, and also with you. blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly trust in Jesus name my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly trust in Jesus name Christ alone cornerstone weak made strong Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on
the Lord is with us wherever we are. The, the Spirit, Spirit of God moves among us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give thanks, thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You, you embraced, embraced us as your children, children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. as we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory. Send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us, the body and blood of your dear Son. As we share these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer this, you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we, we proclaim, proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. comes. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for us. Amen. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for us. Amen. Amen. So we pray together. Eternal God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth, and to share his risen life. Amen. Sunset sky, but my one request, Lord, my only aim 
God bless you, guide you and direct you. May God give you strength and the assurance of his love. May God fill your life with his presence, today and always. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Alleluia. Amen.
a blessing. Manna rain down from heaven. This isn't second guessing. We know that we are protected. May the peace that surpasses all understanding be our message. Grace and favors in your nature, in your essence. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations. And your family and your children and the children and the children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations. And your family and your children and the children and the children. Be a party and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may you stand up be a party and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you 